Greetings, decimal people galore. Um, this is a review of Unit 4, which for us is mainly about understanding multiplication with decimal numbers. And we're just going to take a look at a few choice items from our unit review to prepare for a test. Item 4 is the first one I wanted to talk about. This is one of those thinker questions. It, it's asking us how multiplying 3 tenths times 10 is similar to multiplying 3 tenths times 1 tenth. And then maybe also, how is it different? So I thought, well, sometimes the best way to think is to do and then go back and think about what you've done. So I look at 3 tenths times 10. And I know any time I multiply um, um, a number 10 times, that means that the digit I have will shift one place value to the left because every place value to the left as you go left is 10 times greater than the last. So if I have 3 tenths and I need to make that 10 times greater, then that tenths digit becomes the ones place digit. So 3 tenths times 10 is 3, or you can write 3.0 if you want to be decimally about it. Either one is okay. Now, with 3 tenths times 1 tenth, well, 1 tenth is 10 times less, not 10 times greater the way 10 was, 1 tenth, 10 times less than. And in this case, it's 10 times less than 3 tenths. Well, anytime we go 10 times, we're moving a place value. In this case, 10 times less means we're moving one place value to the right. So whatever digits in the tenths place in my other factor becomes a hundredths digit. So that three tenths, 10 times less than that, becomes three hundredths. And since that means I won't have any particular number in the tenths place, I've got to put a zero in there to hold that place and show there are no tenths in this number. When I take a little look at my products and my factors, and I think about the process I went through, then I realize this. One thing that both of these, these uh, equations have in common is that we had to move the, uh, we, we had to move a, or make a one place shift to accomplish the product. In the case of times 10, we shifted to the left, 10 times greater. In the case of one-tenth, we shifted to the right one place. Tenth is great. So that's one thing they have in common. The thing that is different about them is when we are shifting times 10, times 100, times 1,000, then we are making it greater, and greater goes to the left. And when we are working with fractional or decimal numbers like tenths, hundredths, thousandths, lesser is moving to the right. Ten times greater for every shift left, ten times lesser for every shift right. Okay, well, let's try something. Haha, -ha. here we have some decimals with some exponent numbers. And what it looks like we're doing is noticing and being able to follow some patterns. So we've got 3 and 8 tenths times 10 to the power 1, 3 and 8 tenths times 10 to the power 2, 3 and 8 tenths times 10 to the power 3. Well, I know that another way of thinking about this is I can break down those exponents and have 3 and 8 tenths and 10 to the, 10 to the power of 1 is just a single factor of 10. And in this case, well, I just remember 10 times greater means I'm going to shift, um, I'm going to shift to the left. So 3 and 8 tenths, 10 times greater than that, means that 1's place becomes the 10's place, the 10's place is the 1's place, and I can leave it as 38 whole, or if I need to show the decimal, I can show 38.0. Now with 3 and 8 tenths times 10 to the second power, that breaks down to 3 and 8 tenths, and 10 to the second power is 10 times 10. So I have two factors of 10. Here, that's going to mean every time I multiply 10 by 10, I'm going to move 
that decimal another place or I'm going to move every shift every de every uh, sorry every place value is going to shift one place over to the left since I have two tens that means two places so that ones place digit three moves two places tens and now it's a hundreds digit and that tenths digit eight moves two places so it goes ones that's a tens digit now that doesn't mean this is 38 because we still need a ones digit to to finish our number we can't have a tens place in a, in a hundreds place but no ones place since I don't have a value there I've got to put in a zero and I can put in point zero if I need to make it look like a decimal but it isn't necessary finally if we think about the pattern that we see here we're going to be taking that three and eight tenths and noticing ten to the power of three means we're going to have three factors of ten ten times ten times ten if that's the case that means that all of the the, the digits will shift three places to the right I kid you not um, sometimes I will actually make a little one two three shift here whoops wrong way ignore me it's very early in the morning in the place in time and space when I'm recording this let's try that again a shift in time and space one two three so I see oh, okay that decimals moving over three places so I'm going to have my three is going to go from the ones to the thousands. My eight is going to go from the tenths all the way to the hundreds. And then I'm going to have two more places, tens and ones. And since I don't have a, a, a digit with value, I put a zero in there to show no tens in this number, no ones in this number. And I don't have to put a point zero on there unless for some reason it's necessary. Like it's money, but it's not money in this case. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to put a little comma in there. So the pattern I see, multiply by 10, it went to the, the product went to 38, multiply 10 to the power 2, 380, 10 to the power 3, 3,800. If we kept going, if we had 10 to the power of 4, everything would move over one more place, so we'd end up with 38,000. It'd be crazy. All right. Now let's take a look at something that uh, is uh, just straight multiplication of whole numbers. One thing that we worked on the, in this unit was really uh, mastering the shortcut method of multiplication. It's not my favorite because it doesn't do a great job of really showing what you're doing, but it is fast. And there were two shortcut methods we looked at. One was groups below, one was groups above, and I'm going to show both of them fairly quickly here and you can always watch, um, you can always go back and watch over and over if you need to. Let's look at groups below first. Um, this is where we do all our adding at the end. First, we're going to start out by multiplying 94 times 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 9 is 18. So that's 94 times 2. Now we're going to move to the tens place, because we're, we're done with this ones place. Since we're multiplying in a, a tens place number, we need to put a zero here to show, oh, done with the ones place multiplication of that bottom factor. And now we're going to move through, and we have 5 times 4 is 20. And I'm going to have to carry that 2 over to the next value. And 5 times 9 is 45. And here I just have to multiply my partial pro or not multiply, but add my partial products. I might be learning a lesson about this being a little too early for me to try and bust out a tutorial. But here we are, 4,888, we get there. Now, I know most short cutters prefer to use the, the uh, groups above method, so um, that's actually going to start out the same. There's nothing special here. Once we've done the ones place, we put in that zero placeholder. 5 times 4 is 20. In this case, we're going to group, regroup that 2 above in the next value over and 5 times 9 is 45 plus the 2 is 47 
and we end up in the exact same place. If we want to estimate to check either of these problems, we're going to round each of the numbers. 94 rounds down to the nearest 10 to 90, 52 rounds down to the nearest 10 to 50, and that becomes a mental math thing where we take our zeros and then 9 times 5 is 45, and we can see, okay, our, our answers, our answer, our exact answer is a little bit more than that, but that makes sense because both of our factors are a little bit more than that. So our answer seems reasonable. All right. Um, in part two, we'll do some decimal multiplication and problem solving. Uh, study and pay attention and check your work and all that. Yeah?